there. So um, finally, out of the whole inventory thing that I was uh, learning, I have to admit it was um, starting to get a little bit tedious, I will say. Um, though it is very important, uh, especially in an RPG, to have an inventory system so I can understand the practical application for in, in, uh, in learning so much about it. Um, but I'm going to go over a little bit of um, actual design principles. Uh, I've even written notes. So basically, the principle that I'm going to be going over is actually the, it's known as the SOLID design principle, which is a, an acronym. Uh, I've actually got this rather nice little uh, thing here. It's a design principle for uh, C Sharp, basically. Or, to be honest, it could be used for a multitude of different programming languages. Um, so basically, it deals with the idea of having um so it's it's, a, it's an acronym so we've got uh, so s will stand for solid responsibility um o is for uh, open and closed uh, design um l is liskov pr principle i is interface segregation and d is dependency inversion now yeah, this sounds very very uh, complicated it kind of is but also uh it's manageable basically Single responsibility stands it, it is the idea that every method and every script and every component should actually have one thing it is actually responsible for. Um, the thing is that I haven't been doing that because the um, tutorial that I've been following really hasn't had that drilled into it. Uh, though, you know, as we've gone on. Um, Mr. Taff Creates channel. Uh, yeah, the latest video that I have watched, he does actually go over this. So uh, to be honest, I'm kind of repeating this verbatim from him. Um, open and closed design. Uh, so it should be the, uh, so you should be able to expand uh, it methods within a script, um, but remain it closed for modification outside of the script itself. So I know that doesn't sound <laughs> that doesn't sound overly. Um, intuitive uh, or it might not even make any sense but basically so the idea is is that I've got a I've got one method uh, and I can expand upon that method and that would be like for example the um, the movement script so I can expand upon that um, but I really sh but I should really keep it closed so I shouldn't have anything that's outside of that movement script that shouldn't really be there if that makes sense uh, the Liskov principle is probably named after some dude called Liskov. Uh, for every subclass, um, this sh you should be able to replace its parent class in every single way, which is what I'm going to be going over with what I've been doing today. So um, an interface in uh, segregation. Each interface should only have one purpose, which, to be honest, if, if you don't, it makes things messy. Uh, and dependency inversion. Uh, so, if you're trying to do something in code, that should um, that should rely on uh, on an idea and a, and a concrete implementation. So, if you've got this if you've got this idea in your head, um, the implication or sorry, the concrete impl impl implementation of that uh, should basically rely on that sole core idea um so what comes to mind would be uh damage for example damage should only really uh affect you know the things that it damages i know that sounds like basic simple common sense but when it comes to um programming the thing is uh you can you can only teach a computer something uh, you can't teach a computer common sense so to speak so anyway sorry has been i'm not really a teacher um so now what i've been doing is if i go to my move player movement script you can see this bar here it's very very long like this is this this is kind of um going against the very first design principle of the solid design principle if that makes sense so it goes against s uh, and this is because it, this this script does loads of things. It, do, it, it even though it's called the player movement script, it also governs things such as knockback. It also govern um, also iframes, also abilities such as using the bow, uh, things like that. So there's a lot of stuff here which should really really be in its own script. Now to streamline things, what we've got now is we've got 
a generic health script, which is can be used for um, the player, um, and it can also be used for the uh, the enemies as well. And to be honest, you could probably sorry wait there. And it should be, <laughs> it should also be used. Uh, yeah, I could use it for the breakable objects. So, like my, oh, my, mm, there you go. Sorry, it's because I passed a beer bottle for it. Okay, so basically, um, my I've got these pots that break, which have been like they started off when I in my, on my journey of um, game development. That was one of the very first hurdles I kind of really came across that really kind of tested my bloody patience, and they work all the time now. Um, now I can have it so that each pot breaks after it takes a certain amount of damage. And if, if that's the case, I would be using the generic health script, which I've got here. Um, this is very basic. So, you know, we've got things that uh, govern like, you know, there's a bit where uh, it will damage, you know, if you've got like damage, this is how much you would take, etc., uh, this is what your full health is, which basically means your current health equals your max health. You know, just stuff like that. Um, I know when I say basic, uh, it's not this is C-sharp. <laughs> That's a programming joke. So, um, also I've got a generic damage script. So this will um, basically mean, this This will be the thing that causes damage to any component of that game or asset which has health. So now I've got a player health script, and this looks really, really basic. So you've got your base damage here, and then you've got your max health. And then basically what will happen was when you take damage, um, it will raise a signal, and it will affect it accordingly. Now, um, the signals are in unity. So, um, so basically, if I go to my player, and I go down to... Where is it? Yeah, so I've got stuff in here that will no longer work. So I don't believe the kickback screen uh, screen kick hasn't worked for a while, I don't think, because ever since I moved over to Cinema Machine, it hasn't really worked. Uh, yeah, I've got like these signal listeners, I believe. Should be here. No, that's not that one. Where is it? Player health. Yeah, okay. So we got to, so the, so as part of the player, the play, if I open up the prefab, we have here um, everything. So we've got the hit boxes, we've got the receive item context clue thing, we've even got the mini markers, and now we've got the, the player health. The player health shows up as current as zero because I haven't started the game. Now, um, what that will do, it will take from a, a float variable or a float item, uh, which is the player health. So if I go to player health here, so at the moment, the initial value is six, runtime value of five. Um, ignore that. So that, that should, so basically current health will go up to five at the moment. So if I click on here, and I don't want to maximize and play. So here he is. Now he's, uh, he's just going to walk around normally like he usually does. And my fire, which does damage, uh, Oh, okay, so maybe I've completely fucked that one up there. So it does take, you notice there, like, I've, I've been taking damage there. Like, you can see the hearts. Um, unfortunately, this shit here, this shit should actually be changing, because it was changing a minute ago. It isn't now, so I do not know what's happened there. Uh, health signal, come on, where is it? Oh, that's sorry, that's because I'm in the... I was actually in the prefab. Ah, bloody hell. Okay, so if I go to here again and I do the same thing, you'll actually see it react in real time. Uh, I hope. Yes, it's actually focused. So, you see there, current health of two at the moment, which is, is still wrong. <laughs> so, there you go. Got it. Yeah, I've, I've got the maths all wrong. So there you saw there, it took a massive chunk. It took out five and a half. Uh, took out five and a half um, units of of health because uh, each heart can't, is made up of two units of health, um, and I completely buggered it up a little bit. But it's still correct. It's just um, yeah, my um, heart containers as part of the UI isn't 
you know, it's shown up as an initial value of five. That should really be the other way around. I think that should actually be six and three, I believe. I think it's the other way around. I still need to get my head around this. Um, but yeah, so I'm now in the process of uh, refactoring the whole project. Um, and that means by take it, that means by taking the initial uh, script that I've got here for play movement and separating it into its own manageable scripts, which and the reason for that is that then you can then tinker and um, uh, you know amend the individual methods, which would be part of the solid design principle that I mentioned. So if I didn't really, I'm not a teacher, so sorry if this doesn't sound like I know what I'm talking about. Um, I kind of don't. Uh, I'm still getting there. But uh, yeah, that is what I've been doing today. Um, and um, yeah, no, I'm just going to have a beer.